having a culture that says go to college, get a degree, and then go get a safe and responsible job isn't safe. If you work for someone else, someone else is your livelihood. Let's teach our children that they have the ability to make extra money for themselves. Hi guys. Rach here and welcome to another episode of a series that we like to call Ask Rach. We are going to explore another round of questions. This one's from Krista and it's about finances. Hey Rach, it's Krista. I just listened to your latest episode 408 um, about parenting and kids wanting to leave the nest and I've just uh, come up with a conundrum. I'm wondering if in your circle, your fellow moms are talking about this too, how rent is so much crazier today than it was when we were ready to fly the coop. And so um, I guess, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering what fellow parents are up against or if they have means to help and it's not an issue for them. Um, it just seems like rent to salary ratios are so much higher now than they were when we were ready to go. So, yep, it's just been crossing my mind lately um, with kids ready to go and <laughs> very little means to do it. Hmm. Just wondered what you've heard. Hope you're well. Krista, this is a great question that I haven't thought of before. And I'm going to, I have one thought I want to put out there, which is from my perspective as an entrepreneur. I will be honest and say this is not my area of expertise. My oldest is 16. So if you hit me up in like two years, I will definitely have perspective on it. But I don't want to give you like a hard and fast opinion in an area that isn't my field. I'm sure there are incredible teachers out there, podcast hosts, authors who have spoken about this and will have better insight than I do. So I'm just going to add one little thing for you, but it's more from an entrepreneur's perspective than from a mama having launched a baby bird out of the nest. I tend to think of things as I tend to think of things through the lens of an entrepreneur because obviously I have been one for 20 plus years. And the beautiful thing about an entrepreneur is that we know that Money is unlimited. Okay, that sounds crazy. Um, if you've never considered this before, this idea is going to be outlandish to you. But as an entrepreneur, if you figured out a great product or a great service, you understand that the only thing standing in between you and access to cash is how good you are at selling the product or service that you have to offer the world, which means that if you figure out how to sell, your ability to make money is absolutely endless. And just as a, a perspective shift to everybody who's like, Rachel, what are you talking about right now? This is a really incredible belief system to adopt if you are someone who struggles with financial scarcity. Like if the idea of finances scares you or if you are worried about how you're going to pay bills you're worried about where the next paycheck's coming from you struggle you feel like you're never going to get ahead if that is you then you are living in a scarcity mindset around money that's not your fault we come into scarcity mindsets because they're taught to us or because we live through experiences that scare us so badly that now we're holding on to everything with both hands because we're terrified of what's going to happen if we run out again but another way to begin to shift your belief system around abundance, around the idea that money is endless, there's so much money, is to just think about in your life right now. If you're listening to this driving down the road, maybe you're at work, maybe you're sitting at home, just think about how much money, physical currency is around you at any given moment when you're out in the world. Think of walking through an airport. How much money is in the pockets, in the purses of the people who are around you? Let's go one step further and think of it in a digital footprint. Let's think of being in an airport. How many 
dollars are in the bank account of everybody who is in the airport. There's money all around. It's constantly being exchanged. Someone's, you know, going to get a juice and like they're paying for the money and then a coffee and we're buying a sweatshirt and we're doing a thing like the currency is constantly flowing and constantly moving around us everywhere you look there is money so a scarcity mindset doesn't actually hold water because scarcity says there's not enough money well, yeah, there is. There's so much money. It's literally endless. It's just millions and millions and billions and trillions of dollars all over the world at all times floating around in the ether. Scarcity mindset says there's not enough money for me. And that is a really scary place to be because if you have that kind of limiting belief, that's going to be your reality. You are absolutely going to create the reality that there is never enough money because you don't think there is. And just as a side note, there are some fantastic meditations on YouTube about abundance mindset surrounding money. I, I really highly recommend it to anybody listening to this who feels like, which like is basically everyone, that you feel like you would love to have a better relationship with money. Start with meditations on they're like beautiful. They're like, you know, you think of your blessings, you think of your home, you think of you raise your vibration around abundance and then you go out into the world with it. So I highly recommend that. And I recommend it for your kid as they're going out into the world for the first time. The reason that I bring up the entrepreneurial mindset and the way I look at the world that like, if I wanted to go make a million more dollars, I could do that. I believe, I believe anybody can. I believe the information exists on the internet right now for free for you to make more money in any category, a service-based business, a product-based business. Yes, you might make mistakes. Yes, you might fail, but the information is out there so you absolutely can do it. Now, what I would teach your kids as they go out into the world is an entrepreneurial mindset around money. So let's say that your daughter is going out into the world. She's got her new job and she's making 20 bucks an hour. I don't, I have no idea. I'm making up a dollar amount. She's making 20 bucks an hour doing X, Y, Z, doing her entry level job at this thing that she went to college for. And that's not even taking into account whatever her student loans are or how she's going about things, whatever. Most of the world will tell you okay, well, that girl should keep making her $20 and really work on her savings account and live below her means and save up her cash and invest the money and eventually she'll make enough money that she can like buy a house and then should... There's all of these traditional routes that we are supposed to take to like check the boxes and do things correctly. And there's nothing wrong with that way to live. But I don't think it's the best way to teach our children how to succeed. An entrepreneur, an, entre an entre entrepreneurial mindset says, okay, well, if I go work over here as an assistant for this consumer goods company, I make 20 bucks an hour, what can I do to make myself more valuable? Well, great. There's a lot of ways. Could I get another certification? Could I get a side hustle? Could I get something that I invest in that I turn a profit on? Could I start to work for people on the weekends? Could I, What can I do to make my hourly rate worth more? So your daughter could make her hourly rate worth more by investing in herself in a way that her current job would value so they're willing to pay more money for her skill set. Or what I think is way more value is that your daughter figures out, well, what can I do on the side that makes me an additional X amount of money? I have a young family member in my life who is in the process of looking for an apartment. She was trying to figure out which part of town to live in and should she do this apartment that's further away from where she wants to be but is less expensive or this apartment that's like in her dream neighborhood but costs more money a month. And it was like... 400 bucks a month or something and she was just like you know $400 is a lot of money la 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 and I was like oh my it is so easy to make an additional $400 a month it is so easy 
and I am not speaking as someone who has gotten to a place in terms of financial success. I'm talking as the person who worked three jobs when I first moved to LA. And even when I got a corporate job as an executive assistant, I still babysat all the weekend on the weekend for all of the rich executives who paid a crap ton of money in cash. So I had extra money. Like I just was always in that mindset. I wasn't someone, I didn't party. I didn't go out to clubs. Uh, you know, my big splurge would be like, oh, I'm going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to go to Target, walk around and maybe buy a throw pillow I didn't need. I didn't have like super expensive, extravagant taste. But like, I remember I got a brand new Jetta. Now it was the most basic Jetta that VW made, but it was a brand new car after driving in a used car for ever and ever and ever. And I drove that car until it basically exploded. And then I had to get a new car. So I remember I got a Jetta and it was more expensive because I I hadn't been paying a car payment and I just was like okay well how are you gonna make 300 extra bucks a month 300 extra bucks a month when I can make 100 bucks easy one day babysitting for someone or get another gig this was before the internet if I had had the internet and the ability to like do freelance jobs on the oh my word I would have been out of my assistant role so fast because I would have figured out that I could take on four freelance clients and make five times the money that I was making as an executive assistant and I would get to do it with the freedom of being able to be anywhere in the world I realize I'm talking really fast and I'm getting really excited about this topic because I think that we do it wrong I do I think That yes, having a culture that says go to college, get a degree, and then go get a safe and responsible job isn't safe. If a global pandemic taught us anything, it's that it can all change that fast. And if you work for someone else, someone else is your livelihood. That job that someone else is paying you to do is how you live. But if we teach our children, if we teach the next generation that they have the ability, you don't, your daughter does not have to go quit her real job and fully commit to being an entrepreneur. But if we can teach our children how they can explore making more cash for themselves, that cash could just be, hey, you're going to use that to go to dinner with your friends this weekend. Hey, you're going to use that so that you never touch a freaking credit card in your life so that you learn to not have any debt so that you learn to take care of yourself. Hey, you're going to use that cash. You're going to put it away because at some point the old clunker that you're driving, it's going to need a new transmission and you're going to be so glad that you had cash reserves. But let's teach our children that they have the ability to make extra money for themselves instead of saying This is how much rent is. Your paycheck is this. I guess you're screwed or you got to live with mom and daddy for a while. Let's change their paradigm. And maybe the way that you change their paradigm is that you have to change your own. You have to shift the way that you think because it's like we're cogs in a wheel. You know, we're, we're, we're sort of inside of this machine that just says like, go in, punch your timesheet, leave, go in, punch your timesheet, leave. And also, you're not in control of anything. You don't get to make your own hours. Do you know the number one thing when they've asked people what matters most in a job, in any job, like everyone's dream, is autonomy. That is the number one thing that leads to happiness in an employee, in a human being, is autonomy over their time. Human beings want to be able to make their own hours, decide how they work, decide how they show up. I am doing this podcast for you guys in sweats. And I'm wearing sweats. You know, I I had flip flops on. Like, I'm just living my best life. I have figured out a way to have a career that allows me to record this while my kids are at school. So later when they come home from school, I'm fully present. I'm available to them. I make up my own schedule. I make a beautiful living doing something that excites me, that I love to do. I get to do it on my terms, my way. That's the dream. 
That is the freaking dream. So let's teach the next generation that that's a possibility. If you think that getting 300 extra dollars a month feels impossible, it is. It is. But if you hang out with enough entrepreneurs, and if you don't have any entrepreneurial friends, freaking go on YouTube, man. Go watch videos of entrepreneurs. You know, like, if you go on YouTube and they're like, this is how you can make money selling on Amazon. This is how you can make money doing this thing. This is how you make money. Like, there's all of these videos of people, creators, like people have YouTube channels, whatever, and they're showing like side hustles or how I went from $15 to $15,000. Like people are documenting step by step. And if nothing else, their stories are going to inspire you and they're going to normalize that there are lots of people out there in the world who are figuring out ways to just live life differently. I think that that's one of the most beautiful things that came out of 2020 and the world shifting and the world changing is that we don't have to do work the way that we once did. You know, my team is entirely remote. We will never go back to a place where we're all going to an office. Why would we? Oh my word. This is so much better. It's a million billion times better to be remote and we figured out how and I don't know why we would ever go back. But if you would ask me that at the beginning of 2020, I would be like, there's no way that we can effectively do this work if we're not all in the same building. Things change. And things need to change for the next generation because I think so many people are realizing like we send these kids off to college if they decide to go to college, but we send them off to college and we tell them to go get a four-year degree and then they come out of college and they have $100,000 in student loan debt that's going to start adding up, adding up because they can't ever pay it fast enough. But they thought it was going to be fine because they thought they were going to graduate college and they're 24 years old and they're going to get $150,000 a year job. No way. There, I suppose there are industries that might pay people that much, but it's pretty limited. And even if there are industries that pay people that much, you're also going to have to have some experience to get a job that pays you six figures. So kids have this like completely unfair ideology around what's going to happen when they get out of college. It's no wonder we find this huge generation of people having quarter life crises when they're 25. It's because they've been sold a bill of goods that's BS. Everybody told them, go do this and then all be set up. It, you know, it's just going to the world's just going to lay out before you and unfold and everything's going to be exactly and you'll be able to pay off these loans that you've taken out in, you know, the first 18 months. And it's like, I know people in their 40s who are still trying to pay off their student loans and they have a job that they hate. There's a great um, speech by Jim Carrey, if you've never seen it, where he's talking about how his father was, I want to say his father was like a brilliant musician he said, you know, he was one of the best jazz musicians I've ever heard. I, I for sure paraphrasing the story. And he didn't pursue being a musician because musicians fail. It's a really hard industry to make it in. So his father didn't pursue it and therefore, you know, didn't didn't make it. And his dad and said, instead of being a musician, which was his dream of his heart, he decided to be like an insurance salesman. And when his dad was, I want to say in his 40s, the insurance company closed down, did huge layoffs, and his dad got laid off. And he never recovered. So he's like, my dad didn't pursue his dream, his ideal, this thing that he loved because he thought he might fail. Instead, he pursued the safe thing, and he still failed. So he's telling this story, and he's like, you can fail doing the safe thing so you may as well fail trying to do something you love trying to do something different trying to approach the world in a way that's uncommon trying to break generational cycles of poverty you may as well fail in pursuit of something awesome than fail following the line that everybody else has followed so probably not the advice you were looking for today, but 
again, there are lots of incredible teachers who I'm sure can share wisdom on your specific, you know, quandary, which is kids and rent and what do we do? But instead of trying to help our children get by, my entrepreneurial spirit goes to, how do we teach them that they can fly? How do we teach them that they have unlimited potential? How do we teach them that they get to make up the rules and it is whatever they want it to be and they're going to fail, but by golly, let's fail forward. That's the advice that I would give to new adults. And I hope you found it helpful. And that's this episode of Ask Rach. If you have questions, I hope you will call in and ask them. Remember, we're talking about mindset. So anything that you have surrounding mindset, give me a buzz, 737-400-4626. And if this episode was helpful for you, please send it out into the community. I will be back soon with more info. And until then, remember, I love you and I'm rooting for you. The hormone surge I get post-period feels like depression. And I'm sure that if someone did more research that they could track the way we feel with what hormones